All right, so in this video lecture, we are going to continue studying about the logarithms. And here particularly, we are studying about the properties of a logarithm. Okay, so it is required that this lesson here must, must be watched after you have already learned from my the earlier video lecture on the introduction to the, to the logarithm and what the logarithm is and, and all that. And, and we have already had some examples there getting the, you comfortable with the, with the operating around, operating around, working around with the, with the logarithm. And so here we push our study into some further understanding. And here we looking at the properties of logarithms. Okay. And, uh, but then other than that, uh, throughout this entire lecture, uh, seeing a logarithm as a function or not is not uh, heavily required. Because even if you arrive at this video without uh, the, any instruction that a logarithm can be a function, we can still entirely regard to a logarithm as an operation, as a mathematical operation. And as a matter of fact, my main intention for this video lesson is to introduce the properties of a logarithm, of any logarithm based on the understanding, based on the only assumption that a logarithm is a known mathematical operation ap immediately after my earlier introduction on a, what a logarithm is. All right, and other than that, let's get started. All right, so this is now one important property that uh, I have to really mention. After we have seen enough uh, work with logarithm in my uh, video lecture that I delivered earlier about the introduction of a logarithm. So here, this is a very underlining property right here. I will not even number the property here because it's just so important. You will see it here starting from this point and, and later on any time in our study that we're looking at a logarithm. We have to keep this property in mind right here. So I will not even gonna number. So in, along with what I'm saying, uh, a little bit ahead of time for anyone to know, but uh, throughout the, the, the properties that I will be introducing through in, in this particular lecture, I will number those uh, proper properties. However, the one I'm about to say right now is a very important, very underlining uh, the, the property. So it, it, I don't even have to get a, a, um, a, a number for it. Okay, so, and now another thing before we get started, I would like to also mention. So now we've learned from our introduction of a logarithm is that uh, a base to any logarithm has to be a value positive and other than one. And so now in, in this particular lecture right here, let's assume, let's assume that any base, any base of a logarithm is already a base that met all of the, the criteria, all of the requirements, okay? So here, let's put in, in a little corner of our work right here, any base, okay, is uh, of course a uh, positive, okay, and uh, not one, okay, any base that we're working with, okay, so any base A is positive and not one, all right. And so now under that assumption, I mean, once we set ourselves in that agreement throughout the entire lecture that that saves the work for me any time I introduce a new logarithm, I have to say keep the base here positive and keep the base other than one, okay? So that we can focus on other properties, some other details, some other important understandings of a logarithm. All right, and so now that's one thing we, we set ourselves uh, agree with throughout the entire lecture here, the entire video lecture here. And now, sadly, I need more board space, so allow me to erase that. Okay, so, so now that very underlining property that I need to mention here, and it doesn't even get a number because it's so important. You see it anywhere. So now, let's say we are given a logarithm. Or you can say, think about we have a logarithm operation given or a, consider a, a logarithm. So now, at this point, anyone is well familiar with something like this. And as I said earlier in the beginning of the, the lesson here, it's required, I mean, it's not required, so you have viewed or you have not viewed, you have learned or you have not learned that a logarithm can be a function, that's okay. Right now, if you have not learned that a logarithm is a function, just simply see this as an operation. We're looking at log base A of a number X. Log base A of a number X. So base, here's base A, and again, that base, that's why I had that, uh, 
little old agreement earlier this base here let's assume that the base here is already under I mean already met all of the requirements to be a successful base of a logarithm so this base here some base are positive and other than one okay so now with any given logarithm operation like this then that okay it is a require it is required that the value that we're taking logarithm up, okay? So now this value over here, the way we been the way we have been saying, and we've learned this in our in in my introduction in in, in our introduction in our time that we get in ourselves introduced to the logarithms is that the way how we say this is that log base a of x, log base a of x. That means, and and now I want to emphasize that understanding. That means the logarithm in respect to a base. It's an operation, it's a mathematical operation, uh, a mathematical work that we apply on, uh, on that number. That's why it's been stated, it's been, it's been said or it's been uh, pronounced that log base A of X. So X here is a number, it's an expression, it could be, it could be a, a number and an expression. Okay, so now let's look into some further, because so far throughout my entire, the, the, Introduction to logarithms, I mostly and I really only f emphasize on working and get viewers and students of mine who learn with me to be comfortable with operating with logarithms. But now I'm uh, assuming that you have already become a little more mature in, in, in your understanding of logarithms, then we have to even push further. So now let's put our experience together and look at that number that we're taking log out of. Okay, so log base A of x. Anytime we're doing that, Anytime we're doing log base a of x, it is required that the number has to be positive, positive only. And this is very important. That's why I was saying earlier before I introduced this. It's a very underlining property right there. Okay, it gets it very important. All right, but let's try to understand why. Okay, we are in the end. In many of my lectures, for the practicality of the learning, the, uh, there were times, there are a lot of times I skip the, the proving work, the, the reasoning work, but at some points we, we have to see the reason why we come up with, why these rules exist, why there's this property, why, why there is this, this requirement, okay? So now, anytime, according to this important understanding, anytime we're taking logarithm, log base A of a number, it is required and quite strictly require that the, the number that we're taking log has to be a positive number. So this x right here, in a more advanced term we call it, it's the arguments, it's the arguments of a logarithm operation. Okay? It has to be a value or an expression positive, okay? greater than zero. Okay? So why is that? All right. And so now I'm about to show a, a, a little informal proof we're gonna prove by example, okay? It's, it's not a formal proof yet, because anyone learning this video, the lesson is still early in your mathematical learning, but uh, it's a good place here to bring in some reasonings why we come up with that requirement, why it's like that, okay? So now, connecting with what we have learned earlier in, in the introduction with logarithm, in our introduction to logarithm, then again, any time we're working with log, okay? See, we got log base A of X, this is a the, the, the general problem we're looking at right now. So when you're seeing this, this log base A means uh, it's a question, okay? What power of base A, assuming base A has already met all the, already met all the requirements. So what power of base A equals uh, X, okay? So that, that's the, we think of the logarithm as a question right here, a logarithm notation like that as a question. And then once we've set up that question and then the answer to that logarithm according to what we've been introduced to, according to how we were introduced to, then it's a question. And then getting the answer to that question will also become the answer of this logarithm operation. All right. And so now in that way, back to what I was introducing here, then we strictly want the x here to be positive. So why is that? Well, then let's take a, an example. And that's why I said earlier we're trying to I'm trying to show the proof here by example. What's wrong with logarithms? Well, we can pick a base now. Log base two of a negative one. That's I just simply 
So this base, like I said earlier, like we already agree in the, the earlier part of the, the lecture, it, this, the base, any of the base we're working with here is going to be a, a base that already met all the requirements to be a base. So now what's problematic is here? Well, this, anyone can set up the symbol. Anyone can set up the symbol, but let's see if this symbol is possible to proceed or not, or is it gonna be even possible to find an answer to this? So immediately, this notation means uh, we're looking for as a question, what power of base 2? What power of base 2 equals negative 1? Okay, what power of base 2 equals negative 1? All right, and then in, my, in, in, in the earlier video where I introduced to logarithm, I also had this uh, picture over here. What power, that's why we leave it in an, an empty box, what power of a base 2 that, that can equal negative 1. Okay, so let's go ahead and spend some time finding that. All right, and so now I have to say for anyone who really attempts, good luck with that. Okay, because uh, we won't be able to find one. Okay, and so same way we can have another one. So now I need to erase this. We can think about. Uh, log base e, ln is log base e of uh, minus 5, okay, so the point now is that let's stick really with all the negative numbers for now, okay, so what power of base e, what power of base e equals negative 5, okay, and to, to, for that question, to answer that question, we imagine about the base e, e is that 2.718 and a lot longer value, that constant, where I already introduced in that introduction lecture earlier. And we actually have learned E back from the, the day in, in the even earlier lessons about when I was looking at the exponential functions. So E to what power or what power of E to be negative 5? Okay, so I already said good luck to anyone attempt to do the mental math for any of this, hunting for an answer to what power of base 2 to equal negative 1 or now, what power of base e to equal negative 5, okay? So, when, when mental math goes hopeless, we're gonna look over to the, the calculator. Let's see what the calculator is, is telling us. All right, so this is our calculator, the calculator I've been uh, using throughout most of my uh, calculation for uh, logarithms. And I've also had some uh, introduction to how we use this. Uh, to calculate a logarithm back in my introduction to logarithm lecture. So now, w even with a calculator, okay, and let's say back to that question I was addressing earlier, natural log of negative 5, meaning as a question, we're looking for what power of base e that equals uh, negative 5, okay, and then of course the, the calculator itself is powerful enough uh, so that we can just type it in that exact symbol over here. Okay, and I also explained that uh, on any calculator, the most it, it has, the most a calculator can deliver is the log base e, the, nat the, the natural log, okay, or the log base 10, the common log, okay, the LOG, like that. But it doesn't have, that's why, you know, I, even though I brought up two quick examples here, but I'm going to proceed into this particular one with the calculator. It's more direct and it has a, a direct command for that. All right. So now on the calculator, we go natural log of negative 5. We really want to, so we really want to make the calculator do the work that we were not able to do, okay? And so that's, that's like I said, mentally that's how it works. You know, once our mental math capability is, 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 is not able to get us there as, as far as getting an answer, we look for the, the assistance with a machine that would a, with a, 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 a calculate, calculating device. And this is what the device uh, is about to do. So now I'm gonna hit enter. All right, and even machine now refuses to work, okay? With the, the machine, it refuses to work, okay? So, so now what about for the other problem, okay? Log base two of negative one. We've learned that, that, that trick from, from the introduction uh, 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 on logarithm that anytime we're doing a general log like this, other than base e, other than base 10, and we can do the following. 
So now, with, uh, with uh, a general base where there's no direct button here, then I can go with a natural log of uh, negative 1. Negative 1. And then we're going to divide that by natural log. And natural log here is a choice. Natural, natural log of 2. And then we're going to proceed. But again, there's another error. Machine again refuses to work here. So all of the problems so far, all of the problems so far is all, is any of, or any one of the problems so far is due to the fact that uh, the machine is not able to handle logarithm of a negative number. Okay? And so the same, and so now logically it, it is the way it is. We cannot find, we cannot find a power, the base here is already, the base is already a number that maps all the requirement being a positive base and being a, and being a, and being a, a number other than one, but we won't be able to find a, any power that makes this overall power to become a, a negative number, okay? And later on when I, later on when we get more advanced, I should be able to uh, come back and explain. So now I'm, I'm still bringing it out to light here that we have that the core requirements that, that logarithm cannot take a negative number. But there's still more details that later on when there is an opportunity in some other later lecture, I will get back and explain even further why we will fail. But here it's, it's a good time now to put that uh, attempt to look, for a neg to look for a power making our overall uh, the expression here to become negative. That's no luck, okay? So looking for that logarithm of a negative number is no luck. Looking for a power base 2 that equals negative 5, it's now time to give it up. Okay, to give up. There's, there's, there's no way, even machines already gave up. Okay, and then you can see that, see, the uh, ones with the bases have already met all of the, the requirements. Now looking for that power to make it equal negative 1, it's, it's not going to come out. And then how do I know it will never come out? We will get to that point some, sometimes here and there, in, in, either in this lecture or in some later lecture where I was able to bring in some more details like that. But so for now, I brought it out to light that even if we use a machine, logarithm it just will not operate. Logarithm, any logarithm just will not operate on a negative number. Okay? So, while I'm still on this board right here, so what about, but the requirements were saying strictly positive. We won't even, this inequality is stating that we won't even consider zero. We can't even take zero, okay? Anytime we would like to take logarithm of a number under whichever, in respect to whatever base that is, log base A of a number, that number needs to be a positive number, positive, okay? It won't even, it won't even take zero. So let's find out. All right, so let's immediately bring up another question. So now, let me stick right here with uh, natural log, log base e of uh, zero. Let's find out what's happened. Let's find out what happened. Okay, log base e of zero means as a question, what power of base e to equals to that equals zero? Okay, so really, can we find such power e? We're looking for, we desire a power that makes the overall equal zero. Okay, this will not come out as well. All right, and then once again, let's use a computer, let's use the software that, or the calculator to, to verify that. All right, so now on the calculator, natural log of zero. Okay, and again, machine refuses to work. Okay, all right, and so now in that way right here, see, it all came out with errors. So now we affirm that we cannot even have a, a, we cannot even calculate logarithm of a zero. And regardless of what base that was, I, I brought up that uh, log base two, and it's the same with log base e, and it should be the same with log base 10. This underlining property is so important that any time we're taking the logarithm of a number, it is strictly required that the number has to be positive, okay? It is required that x here is positive. All right, so the, for now, that's, that's one underlining property uh, the, the, about any time you're taking logarithm, your number has to be a positive number. Otherwise, we won't be able to take logarithm of that. Okay, 
And then we take this understanding and later on, once I get into formally teaching my students, any of my students about what a logarithm function is, then it will become, it, it also, this understanding will come back and, and tremendously to try, shape our understanding of a, of a logarithm function. So this lecture, once again, is intended for even with, with viewers or with learners who, who have not learned about what a logarithm function is. Okay. All right, so that's one underlining property. So important. Now it's something to keep in mind. And so for the rest of our time, any time we're looking at logarithm of a value, logarithm of a value, we already have to be to, to, to know behind our back or in, in, in the back of our mind that uh, the number we're taking logarithm has already been a, or a, at least assumed to be a positive value. OK? So now, other than that, starting from this point, any of the properties I'm about to bring up will be numbered. Now, the way I number these properties might not be exactly the way how you see in whatever textbooks that you are using. Okay? I bring, I put number on these properties simply in the way how I feel they are from the easy level to the harder and the harder and harder level for your learning. And they, these numbers don't even mean these numbers that I label for, for the properties uh, in, in this order that I'm introducing. The, 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 uh, the properties are, are, is not even the, the reflecting the historical developments of these properties on a logarithm. Okay, and when I say historical property, the, the, what I mean is that, you know, historically speaking, some property is, is discovered before some other property. Okay, but uh, these, the, the order I, I specifically design here is not necessarily that historical or the, the order based on the historical timeline of, how, of when these properties uh, came out. Which one's first, which, which one's next? That's not the one. Okay, it's just, so here I put these as a numbers. It's, I, I number these uh, properties just to indicate, you know, the, from the level, from the easy up. Okay, so number two, uh, property number two is, is, is a little harder to understand than hard, uh, property number one, that's all. It's, all right, that's all there is. So now, among all the properties I'm about to, we are about to learn throughout this uh, entire lecture right here. Let's now look at those uh, easy properties. Okay, and easy I mean they are very easy to see. They are they they live, they already exist right in any of the problems we have done, even in the the, the introduction lecture right here. And they are very easy to understand. And so let's pull them out now. And and so now since they are so easy, I just write them here. Make people realize, make the learner realize, uh, any learner to realize about, hey, these properties always exist. Okay? And then, and then we're going to you know, quickly move on to the next one. All right. So let's look at the first one then. All right. So I'm sure you have seen a lot of these uh, throughout. Uh, I'm sure you have seen a lot of these uh, in my introduction. Uh, but let's uh, specifically focus on these. Let's pick a base, base two. Okay, so now base two of one. Log base two of one. That's how we're reading it. Reading it. How about pick another base? Log base uh, three of one. Okay, so now I'm repetitively looking at one and one and one for the, the arguments of that logarithm. Okay, and so. Let's even look at natural log of 1, log base e of 1. So as far as the name, or namely as the natural log of 1, people worldwide are calling it that way, but uh, it's log base e. The common log, log base 10 of, uh, of 1. Okay, And again, I should have written that in red ink. So my intention here is to get you into anyone learning in this video lesson. Well, my intention is to get you into quickly understanding What's the answer for any of these uh, logarithms here? And it, we can even look at we can even look at the log of uh, 0 0.75 here. As long as the base is a number that's positive and other than one, we can have a logarithm. Okay. So I just want to emphasize how universal this property we're about to learn is. Okay. And we're about to learn property number one. But right now, let me demo the idea right there. Let me demonstrate that idea. All right. So I'm going to quickly navigate to the other board. We have about five. Uh, Quick questions here. Log base 2 of 1, what's the answer? Log base 2 of 3, I mean log base 3 of 1, what's the answer? 
log base e of 1. What's the answer? So these are all of 1 and of 1 and of 1. Okay? All right. So for the first question right here, log base 2 of 1. And so we just a few, a couple more times I'm addressing that question again. Log base 2 of 1 means we're looking for what power, okay, what power of uh, base 2 that equals uh, 1. So I wrote 1 in red ink to make it a little special, but it's not like the earlier demonstration I brought up where we, we won't be able to find an answer. We will be able to find an answer here. Okay, so think about base 2. Think about base 2. And we're looking for a power that's making the entire power here to equal 1. All right. We want to look for a power that's much 2 raised to that power equals 1, or the whole power here equals 1. All right. So now our answer for this, 0. Because now algebraically, anyone at this point is familiar with that. As long as our base here is a value other than 0. Doesn't even have to be other than 1 as long as the value here is a non zero value, raising the base, any non zero base to a zero power, to the zero power will make that equal 1. All right, and so that's the reason why log base 2 of 1 now legally equals 0. Okay. And so now I can fill in the answer here equals 0. We found one answer to that quick question. All right, so now I can start picking up the page here. We have about four more to, to uh, look for an answer. All right, so for the next one. So how about the next one on my, the next one on my list was uh, log base 3 of, uh, of 1. All right. And so now that means, as far as this question, what power of base 3 that can equal 1? What power of base 3 equal one? E equals 1? And then we, we're setting up that picture. 3 to an, an unknown power that's desired to be to equal 1. Okay, what power of 3 equals 1? And so that's, so now once again, the only answer. And again, the base we're looking at here is a non-zero base. Doesn't even have to be non-1. Doesn't have, even have to be the other than one. Non zero is the base. And then now we raise that to a power zero. Power raising that to power zero will give us the overall power one. The, the overall computation problem equal one. All right, so the answer now is what power is that? Power zero. Okay, so the answer is zero. All right, so one more time we run into a, an answer zero. So log base three of one equals zero. Right, log base 3 of 1 equals zero. So now in this way we're here, we can quickly predict and of course it should be the same way now if we bring this into my other board and tear down with the question, okay, tear down with like that, those questions I've been addressing right there, then we will get to the same answer. But so equals zero, equals zero, equals zero. So now from these, I mean, the argument is one. We, we take logarithm of a number one, okay? Regardless of whatever base that is. So it, I've, we've done with base 0.75, we've done with base of 10, the common base, we've done with base E and base two and base three representing any base, okay? So what is that general conclusion we've had as, as a property? And so see, I, I list this as an easy property. It's just so easy. We can use our basic understanding of logarithm and, and to convince ourselves. Okay, and so now after we have seen enough of these uh, demonstration problems. Then we come to property number one. Okay, that regardless of whatever base that is, log base A of number one. So just like how I was writing that earlier. So it could be 
ล็อกเบสพอยต์สมานีไฟล์ล็อกเบสทูล็อกเบสทรีล็อกเบสเทนล็อกเบสอีล็อกเบสวอตเอเวอร์อฟวันวิลอีกว่าดีแอนเซอร์เฮียร์ซีโร่ that is our property number one right here and again I said property one property two it simply just means property probably Probably one is so easy. It's the easiest in in how I personally feel about it. Okay, it's easiest one to recognize, to understand, to convince anyone, and you can convince yourself. Indeed, if this lecture here is delivered in a face-to-face -face class, I can just have my students recognize this. Half of the class are doing one problem, half of the class are doing another problem. Log base e for half of the class of one, log base ten for half of the class of one, and they should all agree with this answer zero, and then they should all. You know, come out with the, with this rule on on their own, okay? Without me leading the way, okay? Without me telling the answer. All right. So now we got one property taken care. Let's move on to property number two. And so, I have extremely narrow board space here. So allow me to, you know, that the, if you are learning this and 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 learning in a for as for you know as learning for a formal class, I highly recommend that you take note on any of these. And and you put that onto your own list with these uh, numbers of of the, well, with these uh, the list with these uh, properties here being numbered because each time I'm done with one rule I'm gonna have to erase that and and put that uh, the, making the space ready for for the, another rule to come in another property to come in. All right. So now the next property that we're about to head into. So what about uh, again for any logarithm for any base? And now when I say any logarithm, I mean a logarithm in respect to whatever whatever base that is. Base e, base one, base base e, base two, base three. I accidentally said base one, but we don't allow base one. We don't work with base one, okay? And then and then uh, so on and so on. So what about uh, let's look at base five. Uh, Log base five of five. Okay, log base five of five. All right. We want to find out the answer of log base five of five. How about log base ten of ten? Okay. So my intention is that the argument is exactly the same with the base. That's the the, the general pattern that we're going through right now. The argument that I'm writing in red ink is exactly the same. It's identically the same with the base of our logarithm. Okay, so think about another problem, another quick problem right here about log base e of e. Okay, it's not a nice looking number, but it's the value that uh, deserves our attention, and it's greater than zero and it's other than one. So we can have a base for that, and now it's we can take the log log base e of e. Okay. How about uh, log base point uh, five of point five? All right. So so I put up, I put in on the, I put on the board here about four problems. So a general observation is that in these problems I put on the board that that, I, that I'm using as demonstration problems right here. Then in any of these. Uh, The arguments of the logarithm. So the number inside of the parentheses is now allow me to start using that term more often and more often. The the argument of a logarithm. This is the base. This is the base. Base 10, base 5, log base 5 of 5, log base 10 of 10. So the the argument and the base looks identically the same. Okay, we take log base 10 of 10. We take log base e of e. So the argument. And the base is exactly the same. Okay, what can it be as an answer? And so now I only need to bring up about two problems, and then anyone learning in the lesson from the lesson here should be able to pull out for the rest of them. Okay. All right. So on this board of mine, I still have that question here. That general question. That at least for me personally, this question explains everything about logarithm for me. Okay. So. On my from my other board, log base five of five. We want to find out what answer to this question. Log base five of five, meaning what power of base five that equals five? 
All right, and so now your mental math capability is, is fast enough, is strong enough to answer this. We can also think about a picture as following that can assist your thought process. 5 to the sum power to equal 5. All right, so now needless to say, or without the need for me saying it, that power has to be, that answer has to be 1. That power of power 1 of base 5 equals 5. Algebraically simple enough for that. Okay, and so we so now I'm going to get back to my other board and then fill in the answer. So the answer to this equal 1. Okay, or the answer is special enough, so let's write it in red ink as well. Equal 1. Okay, so what about log base 10? Log base 10, we call from our introduction video lecture, right? this is log base 10, we skip the base, so log base 10 of 10 equals, let's try to find that answer again, a couple more times. All right, this is log base 10, we skip the base, okay, I put the argument, the argument 10 in here, log base 10 of 10. So now I'm raising that question. What power of base 10 that equals 10? Okay, what power of base 10 equals 10? And so we can think of this picture, base 10 raised to some unknown power to equal 10. Okay, so what can it be for that, uh, what can it be for that unknown power? The answer has to be 1. That's the only answer. It can be in, in just our mental math mind is going to be enough for, for getting that answer. All right, so now once again, here my answer is 1. All right, so I have an answer being 1. So log base 10 of, log base 10 of 10 equals 1. Log base 5 of 5 equals 1. Okay, and so far the intention of the two problems here is, is that the arguments is exactly the same, identically the same with the, with the base of the log. The argument is identically the same with the base of the log. And so look at those answers, they're all 1. All right, so in this way right here, you can already have a, a quick prediction in mind, okay? But allow me to do one more formal laying down the thought, thought, the thought process right there before we arrive at the final answer there. All right, so for this problem, for the next one here, ln or log base e or natural log as a name, okay. log base e of e, what power of base e? That equals e. What power can it be? Okay, what power can it be? So we imagine we have in our mind a picture as following e raised to some unknown power. That's why there's a box there to equal e. Okay, it's easy enough that our mental mind can quickly tell, tell us power has to be 1, okay, the answer is 1, the answer is 1, all right, the answer here is 1, so now once again, the answer here is, uh, is 1, all right, so three problems in a row, it took me some time explaining it, but now we have started forming it for ourselves into a a generalization already and so we can really make that uh, prediction for the, the last one that's left undone here. Log base 0.5 of a 0.5 arguments and the base look exactly the same. The answer has to be 1. All right and so now we are ready for coming up with that final generalization regarding this rule that we're currently seeing through the demonstration problems here. All right so what do I see now? All right, so picking it up from the earlier rule I've seen, and now rule number two, or property number two, logarithm, log base A, okay, whatever base that is of a number A, log base A of A, and I should have written that A in red ink, log base A of A equals uh, one. All right, log base A of A equals one. Okay, easy enough that, you know, like, like I said earlier, if this lecture is delivered in, a, in an in-class, a face-to-face setting, okay, I can just leave that, I, a, a class of 
I had four demo problems earlier in the class. 30 to 35 students or 36 students, I can just easily divide it into four little group, groups of students. And each one of them handle one problem. And they should all agree with the same generalization here. And that will speed up the, 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 the process, the learning process. It's just here, I have to explain every detail from beginning to the end. Like that. All right, so here we go. Rule number, or property number two. Another easy one, but slightly harder to understand from compared to the earlier one. All right. And so now, once again, for anyone who is learning, okay, as a formal, as a lect as the material for a formal class, I highly recommend that you take this, write this down as a as as the continuation from the, the, the earlier rules you have learned. Okay, so take note on this, and then shortly I'm gonna have to erase that. All right. And so now we are ready for the next easy property. All right, so now let me demonstrate through a few ideas again. Okay, so how about let's pick a base. So completely out of my own creativity, how about log base uh, seven? Okay, of uh, seven to the fifth power. Okay, and then let's look at uh, Log base 10 of uh, 10 to the negative 3 power. Okay. And then we can look at another one right here. That log base uh, 0.5. Okay. Of uh, 0.5 raised to the third power. Okay, and these numbers come out from my mind completely the, the, based on creativity right there. Okay, and then all right, so let's look at those uh, four quick little problems like that. All right, so so what I see here is log base seven for the first one right here. Uh, so the number here has already, the, the argument has already been expressed as a power, as a power, see power 5 of, of 7, power 5 of the 7. But notice how the base of this power, the base of, to that power is a 7, which agrees with the base, agrees exactly with the base of the logarithm. Okay. The base of the arguments inside of the, the logarithm here, well, that, that's power 5, this is base 7, but the base here agrees exactly, I use that term right here, agrees exactly with that base of our logarithm. Okay, base and base are exactly the same. And the, and, and the similar thing with this next question right here, even though we have not found the, the actual answer to that yet. Okay, but see, observation here is telling me that this whole argument, I'm, I'm not saying that 10 is the, the only part of, I mean, is the, is the whole argument 10 to negative 3 is whatever that is okay but now we have already written that argument as a as a power of base 10 power of base 10 and look at this big base right here this base is the same with the base of our logarithm this is log base 10 and then the number the arguments inside is already expressed as a power of base 10 log base 7 and the argument is already expressed as a power of base 7 and so now on these problems right here, log base 0.05 and the whole argument has already been expressed right at the instant it's given. It, the, the, whole, the entire argument is expressed as a, a power of base 0.5 and again the base in this argument, the base in the argument agrees exactly with the base of the logarithm and now the same with that. Alright, so let's once again let's uh, hunt for the answer for a couple of these and then we should be able to predict the, the quick answer on the remaining ones. All right. All right. So now on this board of mine again. So let me now look at the first one that I wrote down. So the first one I wrote down was looking was looking for log base seven of seven to the fifth power. All right, seven to the fifth power. Okay. So ridiculously, let's write down. Let's interpret this. Operation as a question. What power of base 7? That's what logarithm is. What power of base 7? That equals uh, 
7 to the fifth. Sometimes, you know, once we lay it down to the question, we, we feel how ridiculous that was, that we, we had to write it down. But, you know, I just want to set into a routine that this is the way to get an answer for everything about logarithm. Okay? What power of base 7 equals 7 to the fifth? What power of base 7 equals to 7 to the fifth? And then if this question, if, and, and then answering this question, if for any reason still does not uh, the, the, the guarantee a generality, then we can even bring up that picture right here. Base 7 to what power to equals base 7 to the fifth? What power of base 7 to equal 7 to the fifth? So now it makes clear sense that it, the answer has to be 5. The answer has to be 5. And the answer to this has to be 5. Okay, 7 to the fifth equals 7 to the fifth. Okay, 7 to the fifth equals 7 to the fifth. Nice and easy. Okay, so now on that other board right there, the answer to this, that equals. Uh, Allow me to write it in red ink right here. Five. Okay. And so now let's look for this answer here. Log base 10. Uh, the argument here is 10 to the negative 3 power. Okay. Log base 10 of 10 to the minus 3 power. All right. And so once again, as a, as a formal question that, that explains the logarithm, then what power of base 10 that will equal, the, that can equal 10 to the negative 3 power? Okay? And so that answer, and if we need that picture, then, then so draw the picture. 10 to some unknown power to equal 10 to the negative 3 power, okay? that answer here has to be minus 3 minus 3, okay? So, minus 3. All right, so we found the answer to another logarithm right there. So now, equals negative 3. All right, and so now we can quickly predict this answer here has to be, see, the the arguments inside of the logarithm was already expressed as a power of a base. Power of a base. And then that base looks exactly or agrees exactly with that base of our logarithm. Base and base, exactly the same. So now, the, that quick prediction I have in mind, and it should agree with yours as, as well. Three. Okay, so let's, demo, let's bring that to light right here, really try to find out why it's equals three. Okay, let's come out one more time to the other board. All right. Log base 0.5 of 0.5 to the third power. That's what the question initially wrote right here. So that logarithm operation means the same as this question. What power of base 0.5? That can equal 0.5 to the, to the third power. Okay, 0.5, what power of 0.5 to equal 0.5 to the, to the third power? It seems surprisingly easy for somebody, but I recommend doing this so that it, it can always uh, get your answer so clear. Okay, the answer to that, it has to be 3. What else can it be? Okay, what else can it be? All right, so now... That's why we had three that for that. So needless to throw in reasoning anymore. Okay, there's no need to give in any, any explanation. The answer to this has to be all right, minus two. Minus two. So let's look at all of these problems together. Okay? And and, and let's recognize for one thing that's in common throughout all of these four little problems I brought on the board right here. So log base seven of Base 7 to the fifth. Okay? So the argument is already the fifth of 7 to the fifth. And the base agrees with that base. The base of the log agrees with the base in the argument. It's because the argument was al already expressed as a, as a power. Okay? So log base 10 of 10 to the negative 3. So 10 to the negative 3 has base 10, which agrees exactly with the base of our logarithm. 
And so look at the answer. The answer is exa exactly just that power. The answer here was exactly that power. And the answer here was exactly that power because we were in that same situation as well. Logarithm, log base 0.5 of 0 0.5 to the third power. The base in our argument is exactly the same as the base here of our logarithm. Okay, and so the answer here, power and power, just simply come come down. All right, it makes it just logically makes sense that way. We are now it's enough at this point to come up with the third generalization, a, a generalization generalization for the third easy property that we're looking at. All right, so property number three right now. Now for generally for any base, we have log base A of an argument A to the n in the form of A to the n. Okay? Log base A of an argument that's in the form of A to the n. And the n here can be negative, can be positive, can even be zero. Okay? That is the same as the answer to that is quickly n. Nice and easy to recognize. Nice and easy enough to convince anyone. And that's why I I classify them, I categorize these three properties so far as you know the easy properties. All right, and so once again, for anyone who is learning directly and learning of, as, as a formal learning for a class for this, I, I highly recommend that you take note on, on this problem and write it down in, in a comprehensive list uh, as a continuation from the other two the rules or the, the properties we have done earlier, because shortly I'm going to need to erase the board and, and do some more demonstration. All right, but now as far as this point, the easy properties are completed, okay? Or we, we've done with all the easy properties. It's now time to move on to, I'm not necessarily saying the harder properties. You know, let's not keep it that way because saying it's harder, that means people are going to back out and, and, and reject you learn, okay? But let's say these are, the, 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 after these uh, easy properties that we've just learned, okay? Let's look into those properties where it needs, it needs some proven fact. Okay, it needs to get. Uh, it needs some proving. All right, and so allow me to to use to call these uh, following properties as proven properties, some truths that that were proven by past mathematician. Okay, but now, but there's that they're still easy to understand. So how about I call these the proven properties? All right, so proven properties. And so instead of uh, rushing immediately into demos problems and demo problems, here I'm going to approach by just directly writing down the properties right there. And we're going to see how it applies in our work or what's useful about the rules here. And of course, if I can spare some time, if my lecture goes well with the, the amount of time uh, uh, planned right there, then I can put in some proof for that. But otherwise, you know, we, we can uh, wait for some other out, uh, some other lecture aside from this uh, as informal video clips that I can explain how these uh, properties were proven. Okay. All right. So now continuing as as a list of uh, properties. So calling that the easy properties or the, the proven properties, they are just different subsections. But in the end, as one lengthy list of properties, this is property number. Number four right here. All right, so here we go. So now, for any logarithm, okay? For any logarithm, let's say log base A. Now, there are, there are a lot of times where we're taking the logarithms of a product. So inside of this log, I have an expression, x times y. So think of this as two numbers, okay? And right here, it's existing between the two numbers here. It's a product. So log base A of a product, okay? Log base A of a product, x times y. All right, and so now, this log base A of a product can be, is proven, was already proven to be equal exactly to log base A of x, just log base A of x, okay, plus log base A, same log, same log, same base but of y, okay? So this is, ladies and gentlemen, this is property number, number four right here. It also has a name, but I'm not too, uh, 
I'm not too much into you know making my students to memorize the name, so I'm still gonna write it down here. But you know, deciding to de deciding to memorize the names or not, that's that. Please don't try to memorize it. It's just completely up to how much you use the rules and how much you hear from me using it. It will stay with you. Okay. So for the understanding of the students, I'll just write down the name here. This formula, I mean, this quick uh, proven property right here is called the product to sum. Okay, the product to sum. It's a property, but some, it's sometimes it's also called a rule right here. It's a product to sum rule. Okay, it's product to sum rule. But then the same rule right here, the same rule right here, there's an alternative version of that. That's why, you know, having a name is it's just, it's, it's not that important. I'm not really a, 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 a person who pushes my students in, into just learning about names and name and name. Okay, but the same rule over here, you can think of that as log, if you have two logarithms, log base A of X plus log base A, see, what's critical here is it has to be the same logarithm. When I said earlier two logarithms, I meant two logarithms of the same base. So log base A of X plus log base A of Y, two separate log values. But then anytime we're adding them, they can also be done coming out with the same value as log base A of the product X times Y. Okay, So it's essentially the same rule. Okay, But now see, writing it this way and reading it from the left to the right, reading it from the left to the right. See, product to sum, product to sum. But the same formula here, if we're reading it from the left to the right, it goes from here, sum to product. So you can reverse the name over here. Okay, sum to product. Okay, and that's why it's not too important that we, we know the name because even the name, we, we can name them slightly different uh, depending on the, 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 the situation we're using it. All right, so. If time permits, then somewhere here in, in this lecture, I will show the proof and how it was proven. But other than that, if, if time is not uh, allowing me to, to do so, then I'll, I'll put in the proof as a separate optional video for anyone to watch. Okay, but now we've learned what so far this now, property number four, it's a proven property. And we call it either the log, I mean the product to sum, or the sum to product. Two different ways of seeing it. Okay. So, what's useful about something like this? So let me bring up a quick little demonstration example. Okay, so it's not a demonstration problem to lead into the way, but now it's an example. But I won't, uh, as far as the, 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 the examples of being a, a formal example in the lecture here, it's not a formal one yet because it's so easy. Okay. All right, so now, let's look at the following demonstrating example over here. So that's why it's just a quick little example. I don't even want to number it because this is only an example that's specifically designed to illustrate the idea of how we can use the product to sum or the sum to product uh, the, the rule over here. Okay, so we can evaluate the following. Okay, let's evaluate how about logarithm and no base indicated. Log base 10. Log base 10 of 4 plus log base 10 of 2.5. Log base 10 of 4 plus log base 10 of 2.5. Okay, so the usual rule, the usual way, the usual way how people, or the natural way how people would tackle down a problem like this, we're going to head over to the calculator. Because of course, log base 10 of 4 is not a number that we can mentally calculate. The same with log base 10 of 2.5. None of the logs here is easy enough for our mental mind, uh, cap for our mental math capability to work to find an answer. So we, so natural, like what I said earlier, naturally we're gonna start looking over to a calculator. Okay, we're gonna start turning our our, our uh, uh, attention to the calculator, and making the calculator do the work. So let's see if the, how let's see how the calculator can do the work for us. Okay, but the idea now is that looking up with a calculator is not the real good solution, but I just want to show people how it works and then what's going to be the better option, okay? So, now on the calculator, it's log base 10, so we can go 
So we can go LOG, a 4, okay? And then whatever that answer is, or some calculator is strong enough. Now I'm assuming that the, I'm, I'm trying to deliver the, the understanding for, for uh, even for viewers, for learners who are with the, the even a uh, much more basic calculator than the, the advanced one I'm, I'm using here. So we can naturally enough, we can go log base 4, I mean log base 10 of 4, get an answer for that. Nasty looking decimals. Okay, and then we're doing it again. Again, we're going to add that current answer to log base 10 of 2.5. Okay, in some even more basic calculator, we have to figure out a way to store this answer from the previous step. Okay, and then we're going to proceed as a separate logarithm base 10 for 2.5 and add the two answers. Okay, but now we have an, ex an answer exactly one. So it was, now, and by the way, the log base 2, I mean log base 10 of 2.5 itself is quite ugly looking decimal but now if we're adding the two values here we come out we came out to one the calculator came out to one okay but it already it already took so much work like that it already took so much step and pulling out the pulling the calculator out of our backpack or out of our pocket takes some time okay so right here with paper and pencil this is what I do The product to sum formula, okay? See, now I'm seeing that we, I'm starting the problem, starting out with the problem as a sum. So the same property we've learned, why don't we use the, the other way around? Think about the sum to product rule. See, the same really, it's the same rule, but we can think of that as a, a product to sum rule or a sum to product rule. They're all gonna give us the same the, the, the equal results, that's the point. And so now in this particular demonstration example, I'm seeing that we're starting out having a sum of two exact, I mean of, of two log terms, but same kind, okay? Two log terms of the same kind, and I mean same base, okay? Two log terms of the same base being added, all right? So with that understanding, then here's how it helps me, and I'm giving, I'm putting in a lot of explanations, that's why it takes some steps. But when it's getting into doing this, it's a lot faster than pulling out a calculator. This is now log of base 10, of course, 4 times 2.5. See, I just now utilize and apply that rule we've learned, that property we've learned, the sum to product rule, which is the same if we're, going, if we're thinking about the other way around. We logarithm on a product, we can break it down as two separate terms added together. Here we had two separate terms in a sum. We can turn them together into a, a logarithm, one logarithm, and same base as well. Okay, same base. But then up the product of the two arguments here. Okay, so now what's good about this? Okay, so this is now logarithm order of operation. See, this is inside parentheses, and then we apply the logarithm on top of that. So that means we have to finish out the calculation, the product in here first. And then we take the logarithm after. So in that way, 4 times 2.5 is a 10. Log base 10 of 10 equals 1. And this is the reason why we saw that earlier on the calculator screen. The answer was 1. All right, so doing it this way is going to take a lot less time like that. Okay, I mean, I'm not saying anything bad about technology, but technology doesn't always mean it's the faster way. Technology doesn't always mean the, the, the faster way. Okay, so now let's call that part A just now. We, we finished, just call it part A, because just now in my mind I come up with another one for anyone to, to try and, and for us to work together and see how effective that rule is, is useful for us, okay? All right, so how about another one? Now I can call it part B. So what about log base 3 of 4.5, okay, plus log base 3 of a 2, okay, log base 3 of a 4.5 and log base 3 of a 2 right there. All right, so again, if we're doing any one of this manually, right, if we're doing any one of this separately over here, it's going to run into a pretty ugly, pretty ugly decimal, another pretty ugly decimal here, okay, but now thanks, thanks to the sum to product rule that we have learned right there. Now that can be regarded as all of this can be brought together as a log base 3, one log only, whereas in the beginning there were two log terms, 4.5 uh, times 
times 2. Okay, and 4.5 times 2 as a product now. I just stay straight with that product, I mean, uh, sum to product rule. And now it's log base 3 of a 9. Because I, I talked about the order of operations earlier in the, in the very preceding problem here. And I'm just going to strictly follow that. So according to order of operations here, we have to do the multiplication inside the parentheses first. And then the logarithm apply on whatever that's, once that product is done. Okay, so now log base 3 of 9, the answer is a lot nicer. We, we completely bypassed the nasty decimals on each one of these separately. Because when we write decimals in here, there's a very light, there's a very high chance that we're going to round, and rounding is going to make it off. All right, so now the answer is precisely 2. The answer is precisely 2. All right. And so that's how useful or how effective we can use uh, the rule over here. And, and I'm not saying this is all of the, the, the usefulness there are. We will come to some formal examples later after I finish with the entire list of other properties here. And you can see how these rules are uh, mixed together, how these properties come together. And we can apply them as a, as a combined way so that we can solve the problem in a, in, in, in a much more efficient way. Okay? All right. So now, let's write down rule number five, another proven property. Another proven property. Okay, so, so just earlier we learned about product to sum or sum to product. So we also have quotient, okay, and then we have difference of two logs. And so in that way, let's see. how these uh, properties are written right here. So log base A generally of a quotient. So a quotient here is definitely a fraction, a division problem. So make sure the denominator here is non-zero. And in the end, both of x and y have to be all non uh, have to be all positive because uh, they, they, once we tear them down and into separate components, they have to meet that requirement we've learned earlier in our lecture here. Have to be arguments, uh, positive argument. Okay, so now, this is for now, logarithm base A of a quotient, x over y, x over y, in that order. Okay, and so now we have a, a property that says uh, anytime we're taking logarithm of a quotient, we can the same result can be done by doing log base A, same base, just of x. Subtract log base A of, of y. Logarithm of a quotient can be calculated as log base A of the numerator minus log base A of the, the denominator. Okay, And so what I have done here, I have re-expressed. It's a rule, it's a property that's, that guarantees Logarithm of a quotient equals uh, the difference of the two logarithms, same base. Okay, and that is the reason why, similar to the earlier rule we've learned, this is called okay, quotient to difference. All right, quotient to difference. Because taking the logarithm on a quotient. It's the same. We can break it down to you know taking two separate logs of a numerator and denominator and take the difference between the two logs again. That's why it's called quotient to to difference. Okay, but naming is not important. Understanding how useful it is for us. Okay, is more important. Like that. So the same rule right here. We can understand that the other way around. If we calculating, if we are calculating two separate logarithms, same base again, of course. If we're calculating the difference of two logarithms, how's that? Okay, the difference of two logarithms, provided they're the same base, okay, then we can speed up the process by do, doing one logarithm of the same base of x over y. Now, but anytime it comes to quotient to difference or difference to quotient right here, yes, this one here is called an alternative version. This one is called difference to quotient. Difference to quotient. All right, and it's a rule. 
So now, back to what I said, said earlier, anytime it comes to this property number five here, just be aware of one thing. The order of the operation does matter, okay? Anytime it comes to difference, taking a difference, the order does matter, the difference or equation over here. So now, have a close observation here, have a close look here. It's log base A of a quotient where specifically written here, X is the numerator on top, okay? And Y is the denominator at the bottom, top and bottom. And so that means uh, the, the, the top of our quotient is in the term before the subtraction, okay? And then the denominator of our quotient is in that term behind the subtraction sign, like that, behind the minus sign, like that. okay? After the subtraction. And so it, it's gonna be, you see, the, the order of subtraction here is log base, base A of X minus log base A of, of Y. And then log, anytime we see log base A of X minus log base A of Y, then, then that means if we're putting this into a, a logarithm of a quotient, then we have, to, and we have to put X on top of our quotient and put Y in the denominator of our quotient. Like that. So the order does matter. The order of the subtraction matters. Like that. All right. But now let's head out to the other board right there and see a demonstration. All right, so this example I'm about to show here again was designed specifically to, to show how effective this rule can be. So that's the reason why it doesn't even have a number like example one, example two. It's just one little example directly reflect how effective the rule we've just learned here, the quotient to difference or the difference to quotient rule or property number five of our list, okay? So, example. And let's evaluate again. And we can see another one similar to the earlier evaluation problem. So, how about log base five, okay, of 100, okay? And I want to, whatever the outcome of this, whatever the, the result of this, log base 5 of 100, I want to subtract log base 5 again of uh, about 4. And so now when I was saying earlier whatever the outcome of this and whatever the outcome of this, if we use a calculator, if we use a calculator for any of one of this, it's going to turn into ugly looking decimals. Like that. Okay, and so now I'm going to call that part A right here, and there's no need to swing over the calculator. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a lot more efficient than pulling out the calculator and punch that in, punch that in, and especially the logarithm, the key, uh, the, the, the calculator doesn't always have a, a log base 5 directly. Okay? Any calculator does not have a log base 5 directly, so using a calculator is, a, is not as convenient as using the rule I'm about to show here. All right, so it's a difference. Same log. I mean log of the same base right here, okay? But two separate terms. So 100, log base five of 100 minus log base five of four. I purposely yelling it out loud a couple of times so that you can see the order of the subtraction, who's in front of the subtraction and who's behind the subtraction sign like that, okay? And so now applying the rule we've learned, I, I wrote two versions, right? And so now with the dif difference, with the difference between the two logs right here of the same base, we can rewrite it as a one logarithm of the quotient, so now it's 100 over 4. All right, and so hey, 100 over 4. I talked about order of operations earlier, so same way of working here, same way of reasoning here. We have to work from the inside out. Whatever inside parentheses here, we have to finish calculating it fast. 100 over 4 is a 25, and now we take the log base 5. I purposely wrote things in this step right here. I purposely wrote things in with the order of operations, okay? So 100 divided by four, I got 25, and then on top of 25, I apply log base five. So log base five of 25 at this point is easily, or can easily be calculated as a two. And at this point right here, I really don't think anyone needs to pull out a calculator for this. All right, so we've got our answer. One little nice of formula that's so convenient for us. It's completely bypassed pulling out the calculator. As a matter of fact, calculator is not that useful for a problem like this. Okay, let's continue again. 
So how about the same demonstration little example here? Let's look at part B of that. All right, so how about log base 3 of 54 minus log base 3 of uh, 6. All right. And so now we have seen how that rule was in action earlier, that rule that we can convert it from a difference of two logarithms, same base, to one logarithm, same base, but of a quotient. So now the, that quotient there is 54 over 6, or 54 divided by 6. And so 54 divided by 6 gives me, so a, again, order of operation. I'm going to work from the inside, inside of the parentheses, work from the inside out. So 54 divided by 6 gives me a, give me a 9 right there. And then we take the, and then out of, once we've got the 9, I'm, on top of that, I'm going to take log base 3 of 9. And log base 3 of 9 in your experience with logarithm at this point, we don't need a calculator, a calculator anymore. 2. What power of base 3 equals 9? That power has to equal 2. We found another answer. And with the little rule we've learned here, I, that quickly demonstrated how efficient it can be for, for our calculations some, sometimes. I mean, this is way before we need to use a calculator. OK? All right, so let's move back, back to the other board and, and look for the next rule right there. All right, and of course, we are still working with the proven properties. Okay, we're still going through, we're still on our way to look through the proven properties. So now let me introduce uh, property number six right here. Okay, and another one here where I just simply write down the rule and then write down the rule, and then after that, we're going to do some, a couple of demonstration problems right there. Okay, so let's look at uh, how about, uh, so it's proven that. Log base A, whatever base that is, base E, base 10, base 2, base 3, base 0.5, base 0.1, as long as the base is positive and other than 1, okay? Log base A of A, how about a value x to the n to equal n times uh, log base A of uh, x, okay? We don't necessarily need to have a name for this rule over here. But then something as a warning, as a friendly warning, something to be careful of. Don't mix this with rule number three that we have learned earlier. Don't mix this. This with rule number three we have learned earlier. Quick reminder. Or property number three that we have learned earlier. The property that we have learned earlier in in property number three we've learned earlier was the log base A of an A to the N. And that equals N. I mean, these two are related, but they're not exactly the same. Now, in rule number three or in property number three, we have looked at it was the base and the base here are identically the same. Whereas in this rule number six, in this property number six right here, the base here inside of our power is not necessarily the same with that. Whatever base for logarithm, logarithm of a power, but the base is not necessarily the same. All right, the base is not necessarily the same. And so in that way, I see in this rule over here, the power now can be brought to the front Okay, that's why the power all of a sudden is brought in front and multiply as a constant coefficient. And now again, I can just erase that out. It's not the same. Okay, I should have noted that as well. I should have uh, notated noted that it's not. It was not the same with number three. So, so here in this rule number six, in this property number six, the power is multiplied in front as a coefficient. And look at the log term. The log term now. I, don't, I wouldn't say having no power, it's now just go down to power one where we don't have to visually write it out. Okay, so it's just log base A of X, that simple log base A of X, and then that original power multiplied in front. Okay, that as a, as a coefficient. Okay, so there's also an alternative version, an alternative version. So you can also think the other way around. If you have a log term, 
okay? Power one and everything is simple, okay? Single, the co I mean, the, the log base uh, A right here, single coefficient and then power one right here. But then we have a power in front. I mean, we have a coefficient multiply in front, okay? And we, we can, this can be equal, this is equal to, or it's proven to equal to log base uh, A of uh, X to the N, okay? So any one of these properties from four, five, and six right here, that the, they are, the, the reason I said they are proven properties because, you know, th there were mathematicians in the past proven that the left-hand side exp expression will always equal the right-hand side expression. Doesn't matter which way we're looking at it. But in any of these, it's an equality. Left-hand side is proven to equal right-hand side and vice versa. Okay. So that's uh, property number six right there. Let's now step over to the other board and, and, and see some demonstration of how useful this can be. And of course, after the finishing with all of these, we have a whole world of, you know, of examples applying these uh, and where we can bring in a mixed applications of all of these uh, uh, rules right here and the properties right here. Okay. All right, so now let's look at another demo example. And again, I designed this example specifically or intentionally for this particular rule over here. So I don't need to give it, in this lecture over here, I didn't need to give it a number over here because this example is li little demonstration problem is only for this rule over here, for this property that we've just picked up. Okay, and so let's say we want to evaluate again. Okay, and now how about uh, one third of log base five of eight. Okay, and again, allow me to show man doing it versus machine doing it. Okay, let's see how it takes time right here. Let's see it uh, as far as time uh, efficiency right here. All right, man doing it versus machine doing it. All right, log base five of eight, not a nice looking one. It's not the, the one that our mental math can do. That's why we're saying uh, naturally for a lot of people, we're gonna turn over to machines right here. But let's see if man doing it or machine doing it, which one is more effective. One third here is a coefficient. So right now, allow me to start out as man style of doing it, okay? One third as a coefficient. Multiply with a logarithm. So I can think of that rule right here. All right, and of course, please don't count the, the, the amount of time that I have to walk back and forth uh, to throw in the, all of these explanations, but this rule is more effective right here for, for me. Coefficient in front of one single log. Now I'm gonna turn that into a log base A of X to the, the N, okay? So, this one third is in the place of that n. I never said the n has to be a, a whole value. But so now, here's how I see it. It's log base five, see five is the a right here, and eight here is that x. So now h to the one third power. And anyone, if you're fast enough with math, you can already see an answer from here, but in case you're still not seeing the answer yet, a to the one third power is the same. So now I'm just talking about rewriting the expression inside the log here. Cube root of eight, and now it's so clear. Order of operations come in. Cube root of eight is a two, but now we take the log base five of two. All right. And that now, our final answer here in uh, reduced form like that. Okay, and then now, Let's see how fast machine can handle for us. Of course, machine can go all the way to the, all the way to the, the that uh, decimal right here, but that's not really the important part right here. Okay. All right. So with machines, now we realize the first biggest problem. Oops, we don't have the key for log base five right here. So now with machine, we have to go with a workaround. This is where it produces a lot more time right here. Well. Open the parentheses, one third, okay? And then we multiply with, so now the log base five, we have to spend some time battling in our mind about a choice for log right here to handle. Well, log, log base, uh, the E is fine. And as a matter of fact, parentheses would be better, okay? So it already takes time to roll back and forth between the entries right there. Log 
natural log of 8 divided by natural log of 5. Okay. And then close in other parentheses. And, and plus, if we forget any of these, these parentheses, it can also ruin our answer right here and cause some, uh, some, some anxiety, some pressure right here on us. Okay? And that's the answer right here. But then once again, if just doing this, then we, we have completely no sense of what's going on with that. All right. And so that's briefly of how I'm saying I'm not exactly promoting doing this, but of course, we created machines, so a lot of times if we're doing it, it it's faster and more efficient in, in a way that because we know what we're doing other than machines only has one way. Okay? All right. But that doesn't mean, you know, we always can, can do this. But that shows how efficient knowing these rules with logarithms can, can help us. Because right now if we're doing this, what, at least when we quickly break it down to this, and if we desire an actual answer for this, on the machine we can do the following. So this is the way of doing that all the way from beginning to the end, from A to Z, leaving it all for machines. That doesn't look like a good solution, a good way of approaching it. But now with a more clever way, now I, I can just only handle log base 5 of 2. So log base 5 of 2, now natural log of 5, I mean natural log of 2 divided by natural log of 5. Okay. The answer is exactly the same, but it's a lot faster and less thing for us to calculate, to, to type in right there. So, either leaving it all for calculator or doing it completely on our own, okay? And then, or maybe if we desire something further than what our own can, can handle, then we can at least go as far as we can and then use machine to have just the, 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 le the, 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 the lesser part right there. All right, so that's how effective that this rule is. And of course, we're still going to have a lot more examples uh, as real applications of the, for these rules right here. Let's look at a few more uh, uh, direct uh, applications of, of this rule over here in this demo example. So this problem, let's call that part A. Okay, and then now I came out with a couple other improvised uh, thoughts in my mind right now. All right, so part B of the example. So how about uh, 2 log 5 plus log 4 here. And once again, see, doing this between man and machinery here. Let's see how, how man is doing it, okay? And I'm not saying I'm the only one, but anyone learning from the rules right here can do this with I'm talking about precision. If machine doing this for us, it's going to for sure give us a decimal value for this. Quite ugly looking decimal. Quite ugly looking decimal for this. Log base 10 of 5, log base 10 of 4, and then log base 10 of 5 multiply with 2 to before we add with log base 10 of 4. Right there. Order of operations. Okay, but now here's how I can see this. I can immediately from the left to the right that term right there has a coefficient 2. So I can apply our rule and I can turn that into a log base 10 of uh, 5 square, which is, you know, for anyone it's fast enough to see this is 25 plus log base 4, log base 10 of 4. Okay, and now of course we've been done with that rule we've learned earlier, but now once we've learned it, it's feel free to use it. It's a sum of two logs, same base. So now we can write it as a log base 10 of now 25 times 4. And 25 times 4 here is going to be the log base 10 of 100. Okay, and now I don't think anyone needs a calculator at this point right here because now it's just simply 2. Okay, what power of base 10 to equal 100? The answer has to be 2. Okay, and so. I had to put in a lot of explanations and walking back and forth and underlining and all that. And it takes some time, but doing this by hand completely and when, once you experience enough, it takes you just a few seconds to get this done. All right. Now, if it was a machine right here, look at how much it's going to take us for the process. Two times uh, 
log base 10 of 5 plus log base 10 of 4, okay, and the answer is 2. Okay, and this is for calculator who is, that is strong enough to do it all in one command, but talking about, if we're talking about some of those calculators who are a lot more basic than this, then we have to do a separate log base 10 of 5, okay, get an answer, okay, multiply that by 2, okay, get an answer, and then plus with a log base 10 of 4, okay, and then that answer here will finally come out. All right, and so I would say man solution is going to be a lot faster in, in a case like this. Okay, so, and I want to bring in this, bring in, bring, bring in this uh, quick little one, another little one right here, but it, it demonstrates a couple of things right here. Okay, so, how about uh, natural log of a 110? Natural log of a 110, okay? So natural log of 110, if we're doing this with a calculator, then we can have, we can have, uh, natural log of 110, we can have the, the natural log, there's a key for this, and then one divided by 10 in the calculator and punch it out, yes, we have an answer. But here, there's another way of we doing it. If we don't have a calculator, we don't always have machines available, okay? And I want to, there are quite a few different ways to get through with this problem under the man solution, man solution. But I want to purposely see this as a reciprocal. My intention here is to see that as a logarithm, natural log of 10 to the negative one power. And 10 to the negative one power. And then, you see that negative one power that I now underline or circle? Now we can put the negative one in front. So now that becomes minus natural log of 10. And now if we're using a calculator to really get the decimal, because by the way, this is already in the, the most reduced form. If we really want to de get the decimal, it's a lot faster. Once our thoughts led us from this beginning one to this, then we can simply just do this on the calculator. It saves a lot of work, rather than doing this all the way from beginning and punch it in and punch it in on the calculator. Plus, we don't always have a calculator available. Okay, and so now, Whatever comes out from the calculator, it's better that we just type in natural log of 10, punch in ln of 10 from your calculator, ln with a 10, and then the answer here is a negative answer, okay, because of that. All right, and so that explains for, you know, some usefulness, okay, this quick the demonstration problem right here explains for some quick, some immediately direct usefulness, okay, of the, that power rule that we've learned about the logarithms, okay. All right. All right, so we're still going to have more properties, but at least with up to this point right here, we have done three proven properties and, and, be, and together with some easy properties before we got into the proven properties. And at this point, we're done with all the proven properties, okay? And some of the, of the later ones, they're also proven, but, uh, but uh, even more special. So I'm going to save those for later. So let's take a, 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 a slightly different direction from at this point right here. Let's just start doing some formal example, okay? Let's do some formal examples, but any of these examples is meant to bring in, apply all of the rules we have learned. So from rule, from property number one to property number six right here, we're gonna combine a nice mix right here of the, all of those rules like that. Okay, for, for any one of us to, to learn. Okay, so, so now let's look at example one right here and it's gonna be a little lengthy for the, writing down the, the worded instruction. So how about let's use the properties Okay, use the properties uh, of logarithms. And allow me to write it in short. We here use the property of log to rewrite. Okay. To rewrite the given expression 
or each one of the given expression in case I give more than one problem like that to rewrite a given, uh, the given expression to a single logarithm. A single logarithm. All right. We want to rewrite that expression, whatever given, to a single one single logarithm. Of course, right now, without giving an actual problem and just staring at the, the word instruction, we have no clue what's going to be going on. Okay, but let's get to it. So here's our first problem right here, part A of the example one right here. So let's look at natural log of x, whatever that is, whatever that number is, as long as the number satisfies that requirements, the x here has to be a positive number. Okay, so natural log of a number, of a, some positive number, plus natural log of y, so another log term, another log term, not necessarily the same value, but same log. Another log term, two log terms, but and same log, but not necessarily same value because they, they are on different numbers. There's an x in here and there's a y there. Okay, and then minus natural log of z. And now there's a third term. There's a third term right here. Okay, same log, but not necessarily the same equal value with all three, but I'm not saying that they all have to be different. The point now is just, just three terms. Three log terms of the same log base right here. Log base E, log base E, log base E. The first two terms adding is a sum. And from the second term to the third term is a difference right here. Okay? And so this is what it's this is where it's making it clear that we want to the whole expression here, we want to write it as one single logarithm. Because right now we're looking at three separate log terms. Yes, they're on the same base again, okay? But we want to rewrite the whole thing here because right now it looks quite lengthy. We want to rewrite them so that it only appears one single log term. All right, so here's how I see it. Here's how I see this problem, the way to tackle that. Well, just think about uh, at this moment when we're getting started, let's just put aside the worry about it's a logarithm term, it's a logarithm term, a logarithm term, one term or first term Second term, third term, that's how we just simply at this starting point need to worry about. First term, whatever that is, and then the plus second term, and then minus the third term. Let's not be too worried about the logarithm yet at this point. Okay, but now in our understanding with, in our understanding with algebra or in our experience with algebra at this point right here, well, we can work from the left to the right, right? And we can start grouping associative law, associative law. We can work, we can group it in the first two terms first, and then whatever comes out from the first two terms, we're gonna combine the result of the first two terms with the next term. We're gonna work one by one from the left to the right. Let's keep it natural that way. And in that way, I now I'm I mean I'm gonna group the first two. And that's why I'm 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 talking about uh, now we can start seeing these as two log terms right here, but they are added. So grouping these two. Rule number four came out for us earlier. Rule number, rule, number, rule number four that we studied earlier. We already had direct example where I didn't number those, and now we can apply rule number four right here, or property number four right here. Outside of this lecture, other professors may name those uh, the properties differently. Okay, so here within this lecture, rule number four, product to sum or sum to product. All right, so now immediately grouping these two. I can produce the following. Now it's a natural log of, see, easy enough, x times y. Now we, these two is truncated, or these two together got truncated down to only one term. All right, so now in the whole expression, there's still one term left over. So these terms group together as one now, and then minus natural log of z. Okay, so now all of a sudden we realize we shorten it down significantly. We already down to only two terms. All right, so now you see where I'm going immediately already. Now we have with these two separate terms, we can rewrite them as one single log. It's a subtraction between the two log terms here. Okay, so now it's natural log, log base E, same log, same log, same log, same log, same log. Okay. 
x, y as one, well, it's a product, but it's at least it's whatever number for the first term. And now I'm going to take that whole thing, divide by as a quotient. So now from here to that step, I'm using rule number five. So that's why the whole example one here, that's, this is where I start applying multiple rules, multiple properties into solving one problem, into handling one problem. So now it's natural log of x, y as a product over z. But now have we achieved the, the, our goal right here for this problem? We want to rewrite each given or the given expression to one single logarithm. Let's now underline it. Single logarithm. And we have achieved our goal. Now we have only one single logarithm. Okay, this is where we know we're done. We're done for that particular problem. All right, that's how we're done part A. Let's move on to part B right here. Okay, another problem where I want to lead the way for, for students of mine, for anyone learning with me to, to get more experience and get more experience. And, and of course, as you go along with this, okay, start forming on for yourself your own routine right here. Every problem has a slightly different approach like that, okay? All right, so here we are at uh, part B of the same of the same example right here of the current example. So what about uh, I'm starting out with one term, natural log of x minus the natural log of z, okay, and plus or indeed from what I prepare in the lecture note right here, we have a minus natural log of uh, of t. Okay, again multiple terms and there can be even be a lot more and this one right here once I finish writing it down anyone can start is more than welcome to try independently on your own already but I, I want to set into that routine right here that that general foundation that when we are encountering something multiple terms like this let's start out with from the left to the right from the left to the right that's the way how algebra has been working from the left to the right so and what I mean is we group things from the left to the right, we group two things at a time, two things at a time, from the left to the right. Okay, so that means what? Now from the left to the right, I am going to group my first two terms here. So in my next step, so now just grouping the first two terms, this is what I see. It's a difference of these two terms, and the first term is, is already a positive term right there, so nothing surprising, it's just here the difference between, the difference between natural log of x and a natural log of z right here. So that's property number five we've learned earlier. Now it's becoming useful here. We can use that, we can apply that here. Now it becomes a logarithm natural log or log base e of x over z. Okay, and again, be careful for the order of the, the, of the subtraction here so that it leads to the proper, the correct order of in our quotient right there. So x comes first in the subtraction x comes in the numerator in the in the quotient. And then now I'm going to subtract natural log of, of t. And so now all of a sudden we realize after grouping the first two terms from the left to the right, all right, we're down to something like this. And it never hurts to move uh, step by step at all. I highly recommend this habit for anyone starting to learn about this work right here with logarithm. Now we have, to, we're down to two terms. Initially three terms, now we're down to two terms, consequently out of combining the first two. And now with these two terms, there's another difference waiting for us. Difference of two logs, but good thing, same base logs right here. All right, so now combining this together, I'm looking at a logarithm, base e of the x over y, but over t, okay? The fraction there for now looks a little ugly. x over y all over t. But it shows the fact that I apply directly that difference to quotient rule or property that we've learned. All right, and so now at least we're down to one single log term at this final answer. It just, it bothers me that the expression inside is still looking this complicated. So let's just quickly simplify that. Algebraically, x over y and all over a t right here, that becomes simply just, so now natural log of, so now it's just x over yt, okay? Anyone viewing the lesson here is experienced to see how I go from here to that. So feel free to pause the video to verify that for me. 
Okay, but x over y as a small, small fraction all over a t can all be rewritten as an x over yt. So yt multiply together in one denominator. But this is, again, one single log term, and the expression inside is a lot simpler. All right, that's how we've done part b. So one little experience for this kind of problem, go from the left to the right and group two terms at a time, two terms at a time. Whatever comes out from the first two terms that we group, and then we're going to use that one for the next one right there. There's no need to rush your step. Okay. And so far, I brought in part A and part B where the first, first term, first, first term is positive. Okay. And now let's keep heading out for the next uh, few other problems where I lead the way and I should be able to point out some more details or add it on top of, of, of that. All right. All right, so in part C right here, in part C, let's look at the following. Natural log of uh, x minus natural log of z plus natural log of y. And this one here is one of the, rel the, the relatively easy one. It's not much different from, from what we have done earlier. OK, and so anyone, after I wrote this down, anyone viewing, viewing or learning from the lesson here can start doing this particular one independently. But I'm still going to show my steps up here. OK, so again, that same routine I've been getting you into. Group the terms uh, two at a time, two at a time, from the left to the right. That's the way how associative rule works. OK, so I'm going to first the, group the first two, but you see, because the whole three, including this one, the whole three problems in example one so far are starting out with some terms positive at first, at, start, at starting right here. And so that's why the grouping work makes nothing difficult for us. Okay, so now underlining meaning indicating a grouping right here. Natural log of x minus natural log of z at this point with our little experience. Now we can write it as a natural log of x over z. These two terms grouped together produced Natural log, one single log of x over z. And then, but don't forget the whole problem here is still, for the whole problem, we still have another log term waiting along, waiting ahead right here. So now we add with natural log of y. And now we have, but at least once again, the good news is starting with three terms, now we're down to only two terms. And now we're going to continue grouping these two. That remains for us. Okay, grouping these two gives us. All right, so one log rule, I mean one logarithm. Product of x over z times, times y. This is sum to product. I applied rule number four just now. From the first step down to this step right here, from the first two terms down to that, it was difference to quotient, and then now these two terms are here, it's a sum to a product. All right, but then right here, so at least as, at least as far as the goal I have achieved, the, the goal here getting, re, I have successfully rewritten the, the, the starting expression into a one single logarithm, okay? But I'm not feeling pleasant with this, with the way how this curtain expression is indicated, is written inside of my logarithm, even though it's already one logarithm. So now I'm going to rewrite this, okay? All of that here can be rewritten as one logarithm of uh, an x, y over z. All right, an x, y over z. Okay, and now that's how I can get it done. x, y over z, natural log of x, y over z. All right, and that is now where I can put that as my final answer. All right, let's... Keep doing a few more. All right. But in the end, I still need to uh, admit that there will be no instructors who are or who is able to provide all kinds of examples out there. So I'm doing these as much as I can, okay, as some illustration figures for you and some illustration problems for you. And then you're going to hopefully be able to apply into your own problems out there. Okay. Part D of the example. So how about we're looking at uh, log of 3x 
Đấy. Plus a logarithm. Well, this is log base 10 and 4x squared. Log base 10 again. We have two terms. Okay. So now, once again, I brought this problem in. I found this problem from a textbook. Okay. I found this problem from a textbook and I thought, you know, I figured I would bring this in in a, in a, in a reason that it has the kind of in, the input arguments of the log here, it has the, the, the argument of the logarithm operation here looking a little bit worrisome. Okay, so it has a 3x, there's a product 3 times x and 4 times x squared, it makes people worry. It has a lot here, powers in there too. But the point now is that we don't need to worry about any of that, even though it may look quite fancy. There's product, and there's product, and then there's power. But our point right now is to combine all of these into one single log term. So if you're thinking about those uh, powers right now and products, so that uh, you can, ev so that we can break it down, that's not the point of what we're doing right now. So don't need to worry about those, even though it looks, a it's starting to look a little fancy. Okay, it's starting to look a little more fancy than, than what we were expecting earlier. Earlier, it's just either one single t or one single z inside a log or one single x. Now it's x squared and then four x squared and then three x and all that. Okay, but now all I see two terms. One term is here: the whole logarithm of three x. There's another one: log base ten of four x squared, log base ten of three x, plus log base ten of four x squared. That's all I'm seeing. That's all I'm seeing. Okay, so now immediately, so it actually turns out, it actually turns out quite simple because we only have two terms. And it's already clear that we have a, a sum right here. So now I can write this as a log base 10, 3x, or how about allow me to use uh, brackets at first, indicating an outer level of parentheses. So now the 3x, now brought in and multiply together with the 4x squared. That's what I. That's what I saw right there. From that's what. I, that's how I apply that from the sum to product. See the two fancy log arguments here. I multiply them together. Okay, and now I brought two log terms into one single log term. All right, and now we are ready for just now. As, as far as the goal of rewriting that into one single log term, we're done. And now it just it bothers me looking at an expression like this. So we can see multiply the coefficients together, multiply the powers of x together. All that common work that we've seen from earlier algebra course. So now log base ten of twelve x cube. That's our final answer. We still don't have to worry about the power here. We still don't have to worry about the fact that it has a coefficient inside. That's not what we need to worry because in the end, all we have here is already already one logarithm form, and it looks quite simplified inside of the log. Right there, we're done. All right. So, let's look into another one. All right. So let's look at. Uh, Part E of our example for here. So, how about here? I'm looking at uh, it's a log base 10 again, okay? 12x to the fourth and then minus log base 10 of 6x cubed, okay? All right, and then let's uh, try to handle that problem here. So, again, Similar to the, the earlier one in part D right here, we have some expression that looks quite fancy, quite fancy inside of each of our logs, but that's not anything that, that, that should catch your attention right now. It's not important, leave that out. Yes, sometimes things may look a little more fancy than, than how it used to be, but just stay focused on our goal. Our goal here is right now we have two separate terms. One log term, another log term, each log term has is the same base with the other log term. So from these two log terms, we want to bring them into one single log. And so why do we have to bother with, uh, with, these, with the fact that these are fancy looking expressions? Okay, so put that aside. 
let's directly work on what we need, like the bring the two log terms uh, into one. So now, then all of a sudden, if we know how to rule out all the fancy things around our work right there and just stay focused on the one that we have to focus to, difference to quotient, property number five is going to be useful here. Difference to quotient. And then now be careful, this term comes first, this term that contains the 12x to the fourth, to the fourth comes uh, before the subtraction. So now I'm going to write it as a log base 10 of 12x to the fourth divided by 6x cubed. Now all of a sudden you realize how easy and how simple that is. Once we just learn to ignore all the fancy part of the, of the problem, all of the fancy detail of the problems, once we've learned how to just rule it out and just stay focused on what we need to focus to, then things are going to turn out easy for us. And now it's as far as the rule, one log term, one single logarithm, we're good with that, but I'm not quite uh, uh, pleasant, I'm not feeling pleasant with this, so I'm going to cancel some common factor. All right, so x to the fourth cancel with x cubed, and then the 12 cancel with 6, so that's canceled away, and that leaves me an x, that 12 cancel with 6 leaves me a 2 right here. So really uh, now I'm having just log of a 2x. It's surprisingly simple at this point right here, and that's why we sometimes call it the simplification. All right. And so that's how we, we've done a, another problem. Okay, so for this example number one that uh, I really ran out of uh, what I intended to, to show the learners and viewers. So now I'm going to put in a, an FYT for anyone who learned from this lesson to try on your own independently, where you can have, put all of the experience you have learned with me through example one into driving it on your own right here. And so being an FYT, I will not show the steps. I will only just write down the problems, and then you feel free to pause the video, okay? And then have your own time spent on the problem. And then once you resume the video, I will just simply uh, write down the final answer. Okay. All right, so the problem for FYT is as following. For your own trying. Okay, so how about... Natural log of 6x to the 9th minus natural log of 3x squared. All right. Natural log of 6x to the 9th minus natural log of 3x squared. All right. So go ahead and pause the video and have your own time spent on the problem right there. All right, so at this point, assuming that you already spent your time and, and now you are resuming with the video over right here, the final answer for this is simply in one log term, natural log of 2x to the 7. That's our final answer for that. All right. <coughs> 